Okay, in this episode, um, we're going to continue looking at electric circuits, and we're going to look at series and parallel circuits. Let's get into it. So, um, what do we need to know? Um, you know, we have basically our learning intentions and our, our dot points here, our success criteria. Um, circuit analysis and design involve calculation of the potential difference across the current in and the power supplied to components in series, parallel and composite circuits. Um, the current is equal in each series component and we need to be able to solve problems using um, this, these couple of relationships here, which we'll go through in a sec. The potential difference is equal across each parallel component. We'll talk about what a parallel circuit is and these relationships here. Now we'll also, um, in the lab, um, do some work experiments looking at this and undertake experiments to investigate current resistance or potential difference in series and parallel circuits using various circuit elements. So we'll, we'll talk about that today, but we'll also do more of that in the lab. So firstly, what is a series circuit? We've got a series circuit here. So in essence, a series circuit has one loop. We can think about it. A battery with two light bulbs. Um, here, this is a, a circuit diagram representation of that. Um, when we do some practice stuff, we'll talk about circuit diagrams a little bit more as well. Um, but we represent the two light bulbs with the, the two circles with the cross. And you can see this, everything is in line with each other. Everything lines up in series. That's why we call it a series circuit. Over here, we have a parallel circuit, which has basically two loops within it. So each light is, if you like, within its own loop. Um, that's our parallel circuit. And obviously a parallel circuit could have a third light or a fourth light. It could have more lights coming off that or, or more resistors, whatever we're talking about. So the first key difference here is let's say that we had here a battery, say like a car battery, and we had a 12-volt battery. Let's say these were two um, identical light bulbs what we would find is this 12 volts of energy would have to get split across um, both light bulbs. So an electron is going to come out of the negative and be attracted towards the positive. The light bulbs are going to act like resistors, so they're going to oppose the flow of that electron. So it's going to lose electrons in both. And if they're both identical, basically we will lose 6 volts across that light bulb and we will lose 6 volts across that light bulb there. Um, so that sort of shows V1 plus V2 equals 12 volts. So the voltage will basically get um, lost. Um, so what that would mean in this case is basically, you know, if these were two 12 volt light bulbs, each light bulb is only going to get 6 volts of energy, so those light bulbs wouldn't glow very brightly. And it would also mean if one of these light bulbs blew, that would cause a break in the circuit and all the lights would go out. Um, so yeah, if one light bulb blew in this case, both light bulbs would go out because we would basically, you know, break this circuit, if you like, there and the charge couldn't flow around the circuit anymore. Um, so yeah, typically that's a disadvantage in some cases of a series circuit if it's the headlights on your car or, you know, the lights in your lounge room, the down lights in your lounge room. You don't want every light to go out just because one light blows. Um, you also obviously want to get the maximum brightness, and in this case you would get less brightness because you have less voltage. The, the voltage drop gets split across the two light bulbs. Um, so the other thing we need to do is if we um, have, whether it's light bulbs or it might be resistors, and they are in series, we need to work out the total resistance. Um, and so if we had a circuit and we had three resistors, so we had one there like that, one there like that, and one there like that, and let's say that one is R1, and let's say that was equal to 10 ohms, and then R2 was equal to... Um, let's just say 22 ohms and R3 was equal to 
uh, 47 ohms. Um, the way we would calculate the total resistance there is that R total would equal R1 plus R2 plus R3, which would be equal to 10 plus 22 plus 47, which would equal 10 plus 20 is 32, 32 plus 47, so 32 plus 50 would be 82, so that would be equal to 79 ohms. So that would be our total resistance in if we had three um, resistors all connected up in series. Um, if we wanted to work out the voltage here, if we knew the current flowing through the circuit, we could basically do use Ohm's law, which basically says that um, um, let's say I always remember as current equals V over R. So V, if we rearrange that, is equal to I times R. So if we knew the current we could then actually work out what would be the voltage drop across each of those resistors um, if it was a, a circuit like above with the power supply in it. Um, so then we have our parallel circuit. Obviously our parallel circuit, if we look at that now, where's my pointer? Yep. We can see, if you like, this light bulb here is hooked up and it's getting 12 volts of energy to this light bulb. That's my red pen. So you'd have, say if this was a, sorry, a 12 volt power supply. Um, didn't mean to draw that one there. That would mean this light would get 12 volts and this light would both get 12 volts. So we would get the maximum brightness out of both light bulbs if they were 12 volt light bulbs. Um, because Basically, that 12 volts can go from there and out to there, so it doesn't have to lose energy going through another light bulb. And the same for this second one, the 12 volts can get all the way to the second light bulb, well, through here and through here. Um, once again, if a light bulb went out, like I talked about before, if the circuit got broken there, that one went out, the light could still carry around to the second light bulb, so you would only lose one light bulb. Um, so that obviously has advantages for headlights on cars and all sorts of things like that. So now let's look at how we would work out the total resistance if we had three resistors and they were, this time, rather than being in, um, in series, they were in parallel, like such. And let's just say R1 was equal to, uh, what should we go with, let's make that one 10 ohms. Let's say for this one, R2 is equal to um, 15 ohms and R3 is equal to, um, let's go 30 ohms there. So the way that we work out total resistance now for when those resistors are in parallel is that 1 over the total resistance is equal to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3 and that would go on for as many resistors as we had. So in this case that would be that 1 on RT would equal 1 on 10 plus 1 on 15 plus 1 on 30 
And if we add those all up, that's basically the same as 3 on 30, and that's the same as 2 on 30. So 3 plus 2 is 5, plus 6, that would be a total of equal to 6 on 30. You're welcome to do that in your calculator if you need to. Um, so that's what 1 on RT is equal. So if we want to work out what the resistance is, we've got to take the reciprocal or the inverse of both of those, which basically means that we've got to flip both of those upside down. So if we flip that one upside down, that gives us the total resistance is equal to 30 over 6, which is equal to 5 ohms is our total resistance in that case. So that's the process we use to calculate total resistance in a parallel circuit. Now sometimes you'll be given a combination of a parallel and a series circuit and there you basically have to consider the elements individually so you work out what the series parts would be. Um, let's do a little diagram to show you this over here. So let's say you had a circuit that looked like um, this um, um, yeah let's go just like that so the first step you would have to do is work out well what's the total resistance there and then the second thing you would do is work out well what's then the total resistance of that parallel part so that would be two that would be one and then finally you could work out the total resistance of all of those parts there so you would just have to do that in three different steps. So, as I said, we'll play around with this more in the lab, and when you see it and make these circuits up, it'll make a bit sense. But it is important that you understand the difference between a series and a parallel circuit. Um, we've already talked a little bit about that, because we said when we measure current, we always measure that in series within the circuit. When we measure voltage, we always measure that across two points here like in parallel but yeah understand the difference between those two and you can work out total resistance for resistors in series resistance in parallel and then even when the two of those gets combined okay that's it for now